वेलकम डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस पार्ट वी विल डिस्कस आईडी नंबर दिस इज द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ दिस वीडियो आईडी नंबर इन दिस पार्ट ऑफ द वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस द डेफिनेशन ऑफ आईडी नंबर एंड ऑल्सो वी विल डिस्कस हाउ टू डिटरमाइन आईडी नंबर एक्सपेरिमेंटली इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द वीडियो We discussed definition, significance, and mathematical calculation of ID number. Theoretically, how we will calculate ID number. However, in this part, we will focus on experimental way of determining the ID number. So, let us start ID number. What is ID number? That is grams of ID that would react with carbon-carbon double bond in hundred gram of fat or oil. Suppose you are taking some fat, a sample of fat or oil. How many carbon-carbon double bonds are there? How would you know that? How would you know how many carbon-carbon double bonds are there in your sample of fat? How would you know it by reacting it with iodine? So if you react it with iodine, you will get addition product, right? You will get a addition product. So the amount of iodine that has reacted, it is proportional to the amount of carbon carbon double bond present in the sample of oil or fat so that amount of iodine that amount of reacted iodine is called as the iodine number or iodine value so in other words you can say that iodine number or iodine value gives you an estimate or gives you a accurate idea on the number of carbon carbon double bonds in the sample of fat or oil that is it is a measure of degree of unsaturation it is a measure of degree of unsaturation yes the second question that comes to our mind is what is the need why do we want to know the degree of unsaturation why do we want to know the degree of carbon carbon double bond in a sample of fat or oil the answer is we can know a lot of things if we know this number one we can know see this uh, this thing is a very reactive this thing it can react with moisture it can react with oxygen it can easily get oxidized the oil can easily get rancid if carbon carbon double bond is more there are a lot of things why we want to know why we would want to know about uh, the degree of unsaturation for knowing that please refer to my the first part of this video in which i have discussed the significance of knowing uh, the degree of unsaturation in this video we will specifically concentrate on the experimental way of determining the id number so how will we experimentally determine id number suppose you are given a sample of oil or fat you don't know what oil it is you don't know what the structure of that oil or fat all you have got is that sample of oil or fat what you can do is you can take the weight of that oil or fat other than that nothing you know about that oil if such is the condition you have to experimentally determine the iodine number so we are using one method this method is called as the wits method so there are other methods also but this method is the official standard method official international standard method is the wits method so the principle that we follow this is a titration technique the principle that we follow is idometry idometry look at this this is ido do not i okay idometry idometry what is it it is the indirect estimation of id id metry is the direct estimation of id i do when o comes it is the indirect estimation of the id so uh, how will you indirectly estimate id we will see in the method itself so i am not going to detail now we will see in the method itself how we will indirectly determine the amount of id the method that is used here is it's indirect right so the method is back titration the method that is used here is back titration without wasting much of the time here let us directly go into what actually we are doing 
idometry we will see what is that we will come to know right in this this thing only <coughs> now if such is the case you don't know the oil you don't know its structure you have to take the iodine flask iodine flask or an Erlenmeyer flask so this is the iodine flask I am not so good in drawing uh, diagrams uh, it has got a cork like this I think you might have seen it in your labs yes this is the iodine flask you take that iodine flask take the sample of oil or fat take take its weight weight that's very important weigh that and put that sample in this flask now you have to dissolve it now you have to dissolve it so the first step is dissolve using a solvent to dissolve it take CCL4 carbon tetrachloride and dissolve the sample dissolve the sample of oil or fat okay now use which solution take which solution what is which solution which solution is iodine monochloride in glacial acetic acid iodine monochloride in glacial acetic acid take excess of which solution you, you can take say 25 ml suppose take excess of which solution using a pipette using a pipette and put it into it okay put it into it so what is which solution iodine monochloride right so you have added iodine monochloride now in the second step so when you add iodine monochloride what it would do if there is carbon carbon double bond in your sample of oil it would give you an addition product like this here i here cl right so mind you that i am reminding you that you have used excess of icl excess of which solution only a part of it has reacted with carbon carbon double bonds okay it depends how how many carbon carbon double bonds are there if more are there then more icl get react right so only a part of it has reacted and it has formed a product like this the remaining icl right what you will do with the remaining icl in the third step you have to treat it with ki okay so the remaining icl the remaining icl reacts with ki and that will lead you to kcl plus iodine so the remaining iodine or the residual iodine which has not reacted has now become a free iodine right so that is what we are going to uh, we are going to calculate how much free iodine is there okay so that is you, the remaining iodine has now become free iodine okay now in the fourth step you have to add starch 1 to 1 1.5 ml you can add starch so you put starch in the reaction system that would react with your free iodine and that would lead you to starch iodine complex and we all know that starch iodine complex is uh, blue to violet complex right so it's blue uh, to violet it's a dark blue uh, complex so you get a dark blue color in your Erlenmeyer flask now in the fifth step you titrate the iodine against sodium thiosulfate sodium thiosulfate so now this is the free iodine right if you determine the free iodine that is the unreacted iodine this is the unreacted iodine if you determine the unreacted iodine you can easily know the amount of reacted iodine because the initial amount of icl which solution we already know that so you have to determine this iodine so what the no2s2o3 sodium thiosulfate would do is to take this iodine and dissociate it from this starch iodine complex so slowly slowly the blue color is going to fade and when whole of the iodine has been taken starch when will be totally free that the system inside the reaction system inside 
uh, will become colorless from blue to colorless will be the end point so what i have said i am writing it now slowly slowly it would react with iodine and two sodium iodide will be formed and you would get this is two here this is sodium tetrathionate and you get starch so now the system the Erlenmeyer flask the reaction system is colorless from blue color the iodine the free iodine or the unreacted iodine it it has been taken and now we got starch so now it's inside, inside it is colorless right so once it is colorless it means that all of the free iodine or all of the unreacted iodine has reacted with your sodium thiosulfate now there is nothing more to be done just stop the titration stop the titration and please take the, your reading in the burette take the reading take the titer value I will call it as sample value okay I will call it as a sample value because it was taken when sample was there take that sample value okay so you note that sample value next step that is in the seven uh, this is the eighth step you can uh, do the blank start performing the blank in blank you don't have to take oil sample rest is the same that is you take CCL4 that is a solvent then you go for which solution ICL then you react it with KI right then go for titration go for starch and then go for titration against sodium thiosul sodium thiosulfate now do you observe one thing in blank there is no sample at all there is no oil sample so still you are putting ICL what ICL would react with there is no carbon carbon double bond because there is no sample so whatever ICL you are using okay whatever which we use 25 ml right uh, using a pipette we pour 25 ml in sample in 25 ml we are putting here also so whatever you are using it here it will be totally it will be converted into free id and totally it will be becoming a complex and the total amount will get titrated against Na2S2O3 the total amount so the blank value is actually the total unreacted iodine right the total unreacted iodine nothing has reacted so it's a total unreacted iodine and what is the sample value the value of unreacted iodine okay the value of unreacted iodine some of it has reacted okay so now you can easily get the tighter value right you can easily get the tighter value what would be the tighter value that will be your blank value will be much higher correct if i am not wrong because more free iodine was released total nothing was there no carbon carbon double bond was there in blank so whatever we used with solution all of the iodine became free so there is a lot of work that is to be done by sodium thiosulfate so tighter value will increase in blank value it is subtracted from sample value so that would be the tighter value right this blank value what is it the total amount of iodine that is liberated the total amount of iodine that is liberated and what is sample value the amount of residual iodine the amount of residual iodine so if you are subtracting the total unreacted iodine with residual iodine what you would get you will get a value which is accounting to which is accounting to reacted iodine which is accounting to reacted iodine i hope the concept is clear here here blank value means the total unreacted id nothing has reacted whatever we have used it has reacted with sodium thiosulfate and this is residual the remaining right in sample the residual amount of id so when you subtract it you will get the 
reacted iodine you will get a value that equals to reacted iodine correct so that is the titer value now the next thing that you had you should know is your equivalent weight factor equivalent weight factor you can say the efficiency you can say how much the sodium thiosulfate is efficient so the equivalent weight factor is 1 ml of 0.1 normal Na2H2O3 that is equal to 1.269 gram of iodine this much is the efficiency of this strength of sodium thiosulfate this strength of sodium thiosulfate 1 ml can consume 1.269 gram of iodine and convert it into NaI so that is the efficiency of our sodium thiosulfate now all what we have to do is to put it in an equation so let us understand the equation iodine value how you will calculate it our titer value true titer value what is it blank value minus sample value we have calculated it already into our actual normality actual normality see we have made sodium thiosulfate in lab we don't know its actual normality we know actual normality by standardizing sodium thiosulfate first so after standardization we get to know about its actual normality into the equivalent weight factor equivalent weight factor what is equivalent weight factor here shall i write it here directly i'll rub it and directly write that 1.269 that is the equivalent weight factor divided by weight of your oil weight of oil into normality expected what is the normality expected what is the normality expected 0.1 normal shall i rub it that is 0.1 normal correct i will explain you how this part came okay i'll explain you right now that okay how this part came see what i told to you equivalent weight factor i told 1 ml of 0.1 normal na2h2o3 is equal to 1.269 gram of iodine didn't i tell you that yes now you can calculate for one normal na2h2o3 if you calculate for one normal what will come 1.269 divided by 0.1 right so today when we were doing it in the lab we got uh, our uh, standardization value was that is actual normality was 0.129 that is what we got as standardization value that is our actual normality when our students did they got this value standardization value so i will calculate it for them my students calculated like that i don't need to calculate for them for 0.12 normal sodium thiosulfate it would be 1.269 divided by 0.1 into 0.129 right so that's how i got this i need to just write here 0.129 that's it so this is how i got 0.129 0.129 1.269 divided by 0.1 so that would be the efficiency efficiency of my sample what is my sample 0.129 normal na2h2o3 that is the efficiency of my sample to consume iodine that i have multiplied it with my titer value that's it okay that i have multiplied it with my titer value so i will get what i will get the total strength right this total strength this total iodine number for my whole fat for my sample of oil i will get the total iodine number i need per gram okay 
I need per gram. So I will divide it by the total weight. So I will get per gram. You got the point? How W came? See, this is for my ID number 4 total sample. I need per gram. So I just divide it by the total weight. So I will get it per gram. So today, when my students did, they got uh, one, one of my student, he got a blank value of uh, 35 and sample value of uh, 9. So that came, not 9, sorry, 6. So that came as 35 minus 6, 29 was the tighter uh, value and the weight that was taken was 5. Okay, that was 5. So the result that came was 94.94 um, that was gram gram uh, per milligram of oil or fat gram per milligram of oil or fat so that is the result that my uh, students uh, got today but uh, what you have to do is this is the iodine value for today now what is the definition of iodine value if you remember iodine value is grams of iodine sorry this was milligram pardon me this was milligram per gram of oil okay because i divided by total weight so i get per gram of oil and milligram because the titration is ml okay so that is why milligram per gram of oil that is what we got today now what is the definition of iodine value grams of iodine in 100 gram of oil that is what is iodine number this is milligram so you convert it into gram how will you convert into gram by dividing it into by dividing it by 1000 so if you divide it by 1000 you can put three decimals 0 0.09494 that is what you will get gram right in gram of oil correct in gram of oil or fat now you have to convert this into 100 gram for that you have to multiply it by 100 so if you multiply this by 100 you will get 9.494 grams per 100 gram of oil or fat so that corresponds to the definition of iodine number the grams of iodine that could react with the carbon carbon double bonds in 100 gram of oil or fat so that is iodine number dear students that wraps up the second part of iodine number if you have understood the class and if you have liked it please do not forget to subscribe this channel thank you very much